What is the scariest link you ever clicked on? Wait, we all over 18? We all over 18? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few years ago, my brother would get a call on his cell phone around 2 to 3 a.m. Every night, he would answer and there was this hellish sounding noise, like static mixed with screams. He changed his cell number after a month of this and it stopped. Then after a week or so, it began again. The same exact noise, exact same time. Finally, one day, he decided to back dial the call. It was an old man that had no clue what he was talking about. He decided to say screw it, ended his contact with his phone company, switched to a new one, then got a new number. You guessed it. The static calls continued after a short delay. By this time, he was terrified every night. Unsure why this was happening, he backed dialed the number again and got a different person. Around this time, he lost his job and his phone. The call stopped, of course. His phone was disconnected now. So one day, my mom asked me to listen to this weird message she got on our home phone it was the static screaming we showed my brother and he was freaking out he backed down the number again and it said the number was disconnected this time never heard from it again after that yo that's bro, actually bro. Scary. i actually got that's chills actually at scary. the beginning <laughs> This happened to a friend of mine. She told me about it a year or so ago. We'll call her Minji. Minji is in her late 20s and works as an English tutor in South Korea. One evening, a few years ago, she was tutoring a high school boy. They were up studying pretty late and the bus had stopped running. Being a long way from his house, the boy asked if he could crash on her floor overnight and get the first bus the next morning. Minji was very reluctant because inviting a teenage male student to stay the night didn't sound like a great idea, but he was begging her and eventually she relented. They went back to her one room apartment and she got into the bed while he laid out a blanket on the floor and they both fell asleep. A few hours later, maybe at 2 a.m., the boy wakes up. I'm really hungry, he says. Let's go get some food. Minji opens her eyes and looks at him in disbelief. Food? Now it's 2 a.m. Go back to bed. But the student insists, no, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat now. She tells him that there's some ramen in the kitchen. He can fix himself some. This doesn't satisfy him. He doesn't want ramen. There's a 24-hour place just down the road. Let's go there. Eventually, after several minutes of persuasion, the boy gets Minji to come with him to the restaurant. They leave the apartment and head out. As soon as they're on the street, the boy turns to Minji and says, I'm not hungry. I woke up in the middle of the night and looked under your bed. There's a man sleeping there. Oh, what? That's kind of chill. They called the police and discovered that a homeless man had been living in Minji's apartment, sleeping under her bed for over two There's months. There's actually no way. The boy only saw him because he was lying on her floor, so he had a clear view under the bed. The police arrested the man, and thankfully, there was no other issues. Whoa, ain't no way. That one has actually crazy. crazy. Two months. Hold on, look on your bed. I can't. Right I'm actually scared because if I see something under there. She got saved. Like, what are the odds that boy had a crash tonight? on the floor that moment hey he was there for two months do nothing but two i don't months, know that could have been that night i don't think he can, can top that but let's see let's see <laughs> this guy says thanks for ruining my night's sleep oh my <laughs> god all right chill chill all right come on come on oh come on, my come god on, come on. a few weeks ago my girlfriend and i were sleeping together when i woke up to her saying what are you doing she sometimes talks in her sleep but this one sounded so coherent and urgent that it jolted me awake and I asked what she was talking about. She then woke up and said she thought she saw someone at the end of the bed thinking it was just a dream or semi hallucination. We thought nothing of it and went back to sleep. About an hour later, I woke up and saw someone standing on the Ew, bed ouch. with the sheets wrapped up and twisted to their neck. I didn't know what to do, but the first thing that came out my mouth was, what are you doing? My girlfriend then woke me up. I had been dreaming the exact same thing she did and said the exact same thing. Wait, so they what? Both had, like, they both had like a sleep paralysis nightmare but it's the same guess. exact one ain't no Damn. way that just really happened man Damn, bro. it could make sense though why would you have like the sense. sheet wrapped up it's just not like... as scary as i thought like i thought all that yeah. was like real or something i mean no <laughs> i would be scared too like imagine cause... all of us woke up tomorrow and had the exact same nightmare like that's scary Whoa, hold on. I just read the thing. Hold on. Okay, we gotta read this. Stop. It was near Halloween time when my friends and I were telling ghost stories. My friend said she was going to tell a story about her parents' first date. She said she didn't like telling the story since it was actually true. The cut to the chase, the parents had spent a nice, if awkward, first date. And around the time that they would have said goodnight, the mailing situation, my dad's friend suggested that they go for a midnight hike of 
Provo Canyon. He apparently knew the place since he had done a fair amount of rock climbing in the area. So the two drove up the mouth of the canyon, got out their cars, and started hiking under just the light of the stars. At some point, the male starts getting a bad feeling since the pathway ahead, which would pass under some trees, would be dark, and because it was getting to be quite late, he ignores the feeling and presses on. In later rehearsings of the story, the female would say that she had felt the same exact feeling at what probably the same time, though she didn't know the trail like he did. A minute later, the feeling came back to the male. He ignored it again and started walking a bit of the way into the trees when his foot hit something soft in the middle of the path. Under the trees, it was too dark to see what this soft thing was, and the feeling came stronger than ever. Instead of finding out what his foot had bumped into, he and the female both agreed to hightail it out of there. Years later, after being married for some time, they're watching an interview with the serial killer, Ted Bundy. In response to a question asking him to describe the time he felt the closest to being caught, he explained about the night that he lured a girl into Provo Canyon and had just killed her when he heard some people coming up the trail. He explained how he hid in some trees just in time, only to watch some guy walk right into the body and for some reason just to turn around and walk away. Ted Bundy yeah. himself. What? No, ain't no. On a date? No. You know about him, Edna? Yeah. You know about Ted Bundy, but not Xavier's whole bitch? Hey. Read the first sentence. I what? Okay, hold on. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm about 98% certain I pissed on a dead guy at Seattle's Gas Works Park on a dark New Year's <laughs> night at the turn of the millennium. <laughs> My friend and I were gonna go see the fireworks at the Space Needle, but because terrorists had been caught sneaking into tons of bombs across the Canada-American border earlier, the authorities wouldn't let crowds near the Space Needle. So we went across Lake Union to watch from Gasworks Park. When the fireworks were over, it was dark as fuck and I had a piss like a racehorse. We stumbled into some bushes and I opened fly and let loose. As I was done, I started to walk away and my foot hit something soft, like a leg. I freaked the fuck out and ran. My buddy chased after me, asking what's so, up, and I told him that I think I accidentally pissed on the sleeping bum, which made him laugh, and I definitely didn't want to go back to apologize for the fear of getting the shit kicked out of me. The next morning on the news, we read that there's a body been found at Gasworks. I don't totally remember it, but I think it was the murder of a homeless dude. The newspaper didn't mention whether he was covered in piss or not. If that person did not wake up from being pissed on, that was definitely the dead guy. Yeah. Bro. Imagine, like, they tested it and, like, arrested him. Yeah. Oh, him. Wow. Oh, all his, what? All his DNA on yeah. all of that. What up? I, I got a conspiracy. So, what? <laughs> just imagine like, the guy who just peed on the dead guy. Yeah. What if that was the pillow? So he decided to, to make it look like a mistake. And what if the police found it and took the DNA of the pee and cut off to the, what's it called? The person. That that would be like a genius idea. These police stupid as fuck. No, they didn't catch him. <laughs> he's still on. Wait, let's see if he's still active. He's on Reddit. Why are we Three days ago. Why is this guy? Though? Three days <laughs> He's not the killer, guys. When I was younger, I had an imaginary friend who lived in this massive antique dresser. We chill out and I vividly remember him telling me stories, although I have absolutely no recollection of what they actually were. I remember that one day talking to my parents about it. Dad traveled quite a bit, so he wasn't up to date with what I was into. And when I started telling him about my dresser buddy, he wanted to know his name. It was something innocent like Peter or Patrick, but I can see him going white in the face. I drew Peter slash Patrick out for him and the very next day, my uncle took out that dresser and burned it. It was until a few years later when I found my dad's little brother. My uncle also had the same friend with the same name who lived in the same what? antique dresser. After a few months of the typical imaginary friendship, my uncle started to have night terrors and couldn't sleep because of Peter slash Patrick. It got so bad that they had to move him out of his room before he managed to get back to normal. Nah, because that's like Peter Patrick or whatever his name. Yeah. He makes you think he's your friend and then he gives you nightmares for the rest of your life. Bro, and the uncle, he thought it was over. He came back to haunt Thanks. his other family exactly. bro exactly hey guys i have to go to sleep now no nah, you scared you scared good night but it also says the less spooky hey. so i guess give it wait what what wait <laughs> what these replies made me... we don't have to read it but what did i just read though <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying like these replies made me interested